world, you know, so uh, what can we do from here? So I would recommend, you know, that at least the Solus, IMO Solus Convention, uh, look into whether they want to mandate, you know, compliance with the IMO submersible guidelines, because what happens in international waters beyond the territorial waters of different countries, yeah? You take a submersible operate in international waters, what regulations are going to cover it, okay? So the US regulations only apply in US waters, yeah? What happens in international waters? Uh, what instrument is there that you can apply internationally? And that is the IMO submersible guidelines. So one of my recommendations is uh, they should look at the, whether you want to mandate the uh, compliance with the IMO, IMO submersible guidelines in the SOLAS convention. Then the IMO SOLAS, uh, IMO submersible guidelines are more than 20 years old. So they need to revisit those guidelines and probably update the guidelines, okay? And then uh, when it comes to NAVIC 593, this was tailored towards the Atlantis submersible. So I would recommend revisiting the, that NAVIC and probably updating the NAVIC. It currently applies to passenger submersibles. So perhaps you can also look at whether you want to apply this to other submersibles. For example, if you have a research submersible or a recreational submersible, uh, do we need to have requirements for those submersibles, okay? So those are my uh, brief recommendations. Sir, one follow-up on that. Uh, do you think the Coast Guard should only update the NAVIC, or should we update subchapter T, the small passenger vessel regulations, to adapt to submersibles? Yes, absolutely. I, I think yeah, subchapter T should be updated, but uh, that, that's a long process, yeah? So it's, it's much quicker to update the NAVIC, and then, uh, but absolutely, I think the long-term goal should be that subchapter T be updated, uh, to address uh, passenger submersibles. The other interesting thing is, if you're under 100 gross tons, you are referred to subchapter T. If you're over 100 gross tons, you go to subchapter H. Neither of these subchapters have any requirements for submersibles. And sir, the reason I ask that is sometimes we rely on the class standards yes. and other standards, uh, you know, incorporate those into the regulations. Would that be the course that you're recommending in this? Yes, I, I would absolutely recommend looking at class society rules because they are updated annually. Yeah? So we have uh, industry-based committees, members of the industry. We have Coast Guard representatives, representatives from the U.S. Navy, uh, giving us input as we develop these rules. So it's absolutely valuable to refer to class society rules, you know, uh, going forward because these are the most updated set of requirements you'll find anywhere. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Thomas, you are now released as a witness at this Marine Board. Thank you for your time and cooperation and expertise on this matter. If I need to reach you for further information, I will contact you through Mr. White. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. And if you have any questions.